everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a fancy German in the shop, a 2008 BMW, oh, BMW something, 328, I think, XI, all wheel drive. And again, long story with this one, customer got it real cheap, it didn't run. Now it runs, but said sometimes it doesn't like to idle and it's setting a P0012 trouble code, which thing has to do with the variable valve timing. So start this one from scratch, plug in our launch scanner since it's good on European cars. Let's see what comes up. Got our key, push it into the little fob there. There's engine on. And turn this guy off. Place your bets now. Is this going to be easy or impossible? <laughs> That's the way BMWs are. You can ask Keith DeFazio. You know, if it's a, if it's a communication problem, look for the water but in this case it's a drivability problem so we might have to do some research but again start from scratch let's do a full health report unfamiliar vehicle just do automatically search okay 16 pin See how fast we can fly through this. <clears throat> By the way, it has 153,000 miles, so not too bad for 2008. Yep, correct identification. Next. All right, here we go. Health report. So the launch is very fast on BMWs. It just breezes right through it. And we're done. Wow. Fault report. Okay. So this is the full report. I usually just hit save right away. All right, here we go. So we got two codes in history, 2A87 exhaust vanos mechanism, 2A82 DME vanos intake. All right. And then transmission has no message from JBBF vehicle mode receiver DKG GS. Man, that's all like Greek or something. ABS history code there, engine start starter operation. So I think it might have had a, a bad starter on it. Instrument cluster power supply so it has been switched off. So we're going for this Vano stuff. Um, again, remember those codes. Let's just look at live data. Go right into our engine control module. Again, fault code. We got two right there. Wonder what happens if you hit a little magnifying glass. Cool. So it brings up some YouTube videos. <laughs> we'll make one, so we'll add that to the list. Hey, new level auto. Did Keith post a video on this? Let's check it out. Yep. <laughs> Keith is going to help us here. Okay, you got a 2009, I think, 2009. Okay, very similar. Uh, yep, 2009. BMW X5. I uh, got here, it had a code 2887, 2 Apple 87 for the Vanos being incorrect. Um, 
one of the things here, I'm going back to the AutoLogic again because it's out and we're just rolling through the cars today. Um, so one of the things I want to point out here is how do you actually approach this car? You know, how do you approach this code if the car is not actually acting up? As of right now, showing no faults in there. A couple of things you want to do. Come in here, look up your oil level. Let it sit there and read your oil level. You might have to wait for that to read. You're sorry to hear it will actually sit there and tell you that it's actually going through its process and figuring out where it is. The very first thing you do for any Vanos, Valtronic, any kind of system like that at all, you want to make sure that your oil mm. level is full. If it's not full, you'll have a bigger issue. The second thing that you'll want to do, and let me shut this thing off real quick. And I'm going to show you something because it's something that's commonly overlooked and people don't really pay much mind to it. By the way, this car's fixed already, but... <laughs> Keith already fixed it. <laughs> if you come in here and you start removing your oil filter carefully, that's how you don't get it everywhere, and your oil filter is laying behind, and that little cage inside there, that little stem that's inside there is no longer there, you are going to have those Vanos codes. That oil pressure will bleed back off hmm. as the car is running. And hmm. not get right to where we want it to. Okay. We got to check those things. are down there in that muck. Right there, which I can't really point to with anything. Let's see if I can get in there and point right I'm over here. pause this. That's in my bay right now, this thing would be getting a set of vano solenoids on there simply because of the price that they are. Uh, right from the OEM, they're cheap enough. And I would pop them in there and verify that everything is okay. That that high failure of an item, that that's one of those moments in time where you can sit there and take an educated guess and probably be right 90% of the time. So just figured I'd share that with you. All right, that was brilliant, Keith. Clear cut straight to the point. Oil level, oil filter, solenoids. Now this car has codes for both intake and exhaust. So again, unknown, uh, the history is not known in terms of the maintenance. Um, you can't really, you know, there's no dipstick. You can't see what the, the oil looks like. So I'm, I'll contact the customer. We'll do an oil level check using the, whatever, the engine computer and check that oil filter. And if that checks out, then yeah, it's getting solenoids. The parts can, but boom. But in this case, if Keith says it's okay, that's what we're going to do. All right, under the hood on the BMW, let's take Keith's advice, do a visual inspection here. So the Vano solenoids, actuator solenoids, are right on the front of the engine block. And I can see that there's one new one up here, and this one down here looks original. Now, I think the owner said uh, he replaced the intake cam solenoid up here. So we have one new solenoid, and then let's pop off this oil filter and take a look inside. I actually have the right adapter, surprisingly. <laughs> right tools make all the difference. Okay, the oil looks fairly clean. I'm going to let that drain off a bit. I don't know if we see any particulate matter in there or not. I want to pop this filter out and see if it's an OEM unit. Doesn't say anything. Uh oh. Made in China. <laughs> you guys see that? It says Napa Pro Select. So that's a variable. And let's see if this cap actually, you know, that O ring on the tip is very important that it seals inside the housing. This guy right here. I don't know if this pops off. 
Yes, it does. Let's make sure that fits in there. It seems to. And this stuff looks all original. So I'm not seeing too many problems here except for the the oil filter, which you know, if that's not a good fit, if these O-rings don't seal, then that would be a problem. But it seems like it fits nicely here. And The top o-ring seems to hold as well. Okay, so put that back in. And next I want to warm up the car and make sure the oil level is good. And again, there's no dipstick here. So we're going to have to use the scanner and follow the manufacturer's procedure on how to check oil level. And then we'll clear the codes and take it for a test drive and try to make it act up. Look at some live data. Alright, so before clearing codes, I went into OBD2 data just to check the freeze frame <clears throat> for these codes because if they're intermittent, we want to see when, how we can recreate these faults. So the OBD2 equivalent is the P0015B camshaft position timing over retarded bank 1 and P0012A camshaft position timing over retarded bank 1. So those are the codes and if we read the freeze frame let's see 14% throttle 14 grams per second 55% load this is the 15 code. Commanded throttle actuator 13%. Closed loop. Ignition timing advance for cylinder number one. Minus 14 degrees. Huh. Fuel trims look okay. Zero miles per hour. 16 seconds since engine start. Well, that's interesting. 71 degrees air intake temp. What was. So why is it saying engine coolant temp is 69 degrees? So it was, a, it was a cold start. Okay. I want to check the oil level using the onboard computer. So you use this little toggle. Let's see here. Service info. Oil. Okay, now I push this button. And it just says, okay. <laughs> um, if that's as good as we're going to get on an oil level check, um, I don't really like that. I don't know if the scanner can be more accurate. So we'll do some poking around and uh, but not having a dipstick. That's just silliness. I want to check this oil level. Motor operating values. And we have engine oil temperature, engine oil fill level briefly only during engine operation after one minute. Engine oil level, engine off set point. Let's just try those. So it's measurement running. I'm guessing it's doing its thing. We can oil. So it's doing its measurement right now. We'll let it run for a little bit. Okay, it says Low, okay, max. And it says oil level equals max. 
So I guess it's happy. All right, test drive time. So under the engine, there's this weird plastic rattling noise. It sounds like it's coming right from the oil filter cap. It's the weirdest thing. You hear it? You can feel it. So that's a clue. <laughs> Let's take it for a spin, see what happens. Uh-oh, the RPM just went up and the check engine light came on. Very interesting. On a hot start, I mean a warm start, I guess. Let's just check for codes. Vanos intake, okay. Very interesting. So the problem just happened again. Let's see if we can recreate it. So. So engine on, clear fault memory, yes, okay, no fault code stored, and data stream, I wonder if there's an oil pressure, engine oil, temperature, Ambient pressure. Idle speed, smooth running values. This is like misfires. Valve tronic. So no, there's no oil pressure reading. Let's see if anything weird happens with these Vanos. I'm going to start it up. Whoa. Data doesn't show anything weird. I don't like that sound coming from the oil filter. If this oil pressure isn't proper, we're gonna have all kinds of Vanos codes. Let's try again, just shut it off. And start it back up. Okay, so you can see why they replaced the intake solenoid, right? But I really want to put an OEM BMW filter and housing on there because that rattling sound at the oil filter, that's just the red flag. So far the car seems to drive really nicely. I mean, it pulls. might only happen at low oil pressure at idle you know I got a stop sign and it's just not happy there or on a hot start so reading the codes again there they are I don't see a check engine light though one says history one says current hmm And the car seemed to drive, you know, just fine. So, let me shut this guy off. Q. 
key on. Let's clear fault memory again. Fault code. No fault code. And start it up. Okay. Ooh. So I didn't like something there. Intake back instantly. Instantly. So let's do that one more time. Key on. Clear fault memory. Yes. Okay. No fault code. Start up again. Boom. I bet it came back. So instant code, <clears throat> especially on a hot start. So let's get back to the shop and I wish there was a way to check oil pressure on this thing, but I really want to get an OEM filter and housing in there. I don't like that sound. Just to eliminate that variable because you know you can be running around doing the diagnostics here. We can look up information on the code obviously, but I have a feeling it's you know related to oil pressure. And by the way, on the second start, if you don't clear the codes, the check engine light will come on. So this is a two trip code looks like. The other thing I really don't like here is if you take a look at what the filter is catching guys there's metal particles in here. Shavings in all of that's not good. And the oil looks like there's little sparkly things in it. I think. Alright, looking up some service info for the 2A82 P0012. This is all BMW gives you. Vanos intake, a camshaft position over retarded. That's it not helpful whatsoever um, oil pressure engine oil pressure let's see what they have here so to check the oil pressure this is the oil pressure switch right here so if we can plumb in a gauge or a transducer I think that would be very helpful so checking engine oil pressure on the N52, it just says disconnect the plug right here, remove oil pressure switch, screw in the special tool, connect special tools, just a gauge, and it looks like Okay, so diagnosis system or pressure gauge, either way. So let's see if I have the right fittings and let's do an oil pressure check. All right, oil pressure check. I got the oil sensor out and the only thing I could sort of adapt to this housing is the thread is not exactly right so I just kind of shoved it in there and regular old school oil pressure gauge I have to use the adapter from my AC manifold kit. That's the only thing that would remotely thread in, thread in there. But let's give it a shot. Ready? Oh yeah, I gotta put the key in. Wow, that oil pressure is so slow to rise. 
No wonder we're having issues here. And yeah, it's leaking pretty bad there, so I don't want to run this for too long. But 15 pounds. Okay, so very slow oil pressure buildup. Let's try one more time. Okay, and back down. So I don't know, in this case, with those metal filings in there and the oil filter. Best we can do is put in an OEM filter and some Mobile 10W40. Do another check, run it. But other than that, you know, it, it's a mechanical problem. If there's any engine wear, those metal filings, if some of the bearings are worn or, or they used the old wrong oil or something, that's not a good sign. This problem's not gonna be fixed with solenoids or phasers or anything. So my question is, why doesn't the oil pressure go up as you rev the engine? Let's try again. If it comes up to like 10 or 15. Or... There's like no oil pressure. That's messed up. So here's the technical specs, oil pump with strainer and drive minimum oil pressure is 1.5 bar which is 14 times 1.5 which would be 21 control pressure engine at normal operating temperature 4 to 6 so 4 times 14 is almost 60 psi that's believable we're we're not breaking 20 psi even at a high idle or you know racing the engine a little bit engine at normal operating temperature this is crazy alright so <laughs> I called up Keith DeFazio on the support line and told him the story here what I found we have some metal shavings we have really low oil pressure that doesn't go up with engine RPMs and we discussed it and he sh sent me some pictures over of what happens to these BMWs let's take a look this is the craziest thing. So, you know, 150,000 miles, he said, you know, there's some oil leaks. It gets on the tensioner, or the tensioner breaks or something, but the belt slips off while the car's running and gets sucked into the harmonic balancer, right between the engine and the harmonic balancer, into the engine seal. And then these pieces of shredded belt get into the engine and clog up the oil pickup in the oil pan. You would not think that's possible, but apparently it happens pretty frequently. I've, I've actually seen one before. If you remember the BMW X3 with the belt and the oil, it was like the oil seal was destroyed. That's what happens, so it's real. <laughs> so what now? You know, he said, if it still runs okay, you can pull the oil pan off, clean the strainer out, do an oil change with the proper filter, and cross your fingers. However, we see metal filings in the fil filter already. This thing's been running at, you know, 15 pounds max oil pressure at high RPM. Uh-oh, not good. So even if you do that, you might still run for a while, but the engine life is severely reduced. Um, so what do you do? What do you tell the customer? Obviously you tell him what probably happened and he bought the car for cheap. Wonder why? Hmm. Um, so you can quote him on, we can take the oil pan off, remove the stuff, do an oil change. However, the engine might still grenade soon after if the bearings are shot and the oil pressure might not come up that much. And would I do this job? Honestly, do not marry a BMW, even though your wife might like it. Don't do it. Uh, I looked up the, you know, the, at least the labor times. It's a 10-hour job. 
And on a BMW, you know you're going to need a pile of special tools. You're going to... I don't want to marry this car. <laughs> so, and then the engine grenades and the guy paid you, you know, thousands of dollars for the repair. How are you going to feel? I don't want to put, you know, I don't want to do that. So, we're going to give him the... Just charge him for the diagnostic. You know, a couple hours for diagnostic fee. And I think... I just tell them, hey man, get this job done if you feel lucky, or just cut your losses, you know. Um, it might not be worth it. So I think we'll, we'll leave it at that, and that's it. BMW, I mean, the engine it seems like super smooth and it runs awesome, but it's a, I think it's on its deathbed, <laughs> which is sad. So thanks all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. A little bonus footage. The car cooled down a little bit. When have you seen oil pressure go down as you rev the engine up? It's about 4,000 RPM. <laughs> Amazing. A quick update on the 2008 BMW 328XI with the low oil pressure problem. Wow. <laughs> so the owner, he took it back to the whatever little shop or dealership where he bought it from and said, hey, you guys sold me this car and the engine is no good. So they, you know, arranged the deal. He was going to pay for part of the engine. They were going to put it in no charge and I think a month later he finally got the car back he said it runs fine no check engine light hopefully good oil pressure for a long time to come but that, that was a crazy case study I mean a check engine light usually doesn't mean any severe problem but in this case on this BMW <laughs> Scotty Kilmer wasn't kidding as they age they turn into money pits don't they yeah this one needed an engine so that's that. Hopefully it stays running for a good while longer and appreciate everyone watching. Stay tuned for the next one. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.